Have you ever opened up a website like FlightRadar24 and thought to yourself, wow, there sure are a lot of planes in the air right now? At any time, almost 10,000 flights are airborne simultaneously around the globe, with anything between 150,000 and 200,000 flights happening each and every day. With such a volume of airplanes, all flying at high speeds and various altitudes, isn't it astonishing that they don't crash into each other? Today we're going to find out why that is and how airplanes avoid each other in the sky. Welcome to Airspace. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you too would like to support the channel and benefit from early and ad-free access to my videos, as well as other cool goodies, check out the link in the description. Your support is highly appreciated. Now, let's get on with the video. As we found out in the intro, the air is a very busy place. With all these airplanes flying simultaneously, it is really astonishing that we don't hear about many mid-air collisions on the news. Primarily, we have to thank air traffic control for this fact. Around the globe, highly trained and capable air traffic controllers are doing a phenomenal job at keeping airplanes separated, no matter if it is day, night, Christmas or New Year's Eve. They provide safety, day in, day out, no matter the weather or operational difficulties. Did you know that pretty much the same skills and qualifications are required to become an air traffic controller and a pilot? The training to become an air traffic controller is hard, demanding and requires a lot of dedication and concentration. The safety of the skies is really a testament to the skill of these individuals. But we are all human and we all make mistakes, air traffic controllers and pilots alike. The good news is that there is a system that protects all of us, passengers, pilots and air traffic controllers, in the case that we really mess up. It's called TCAS, which is short for Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System. I guess TAA, CAS didn't have a nice ring to it, but oh well. Research into the system began way back in the 1950s, after two passenger planes collided over the Grand Canyon. It would be a long while until it became viable and available on airliners around the world, though. In 1987, the system was finally certified for commercial use. United Airlines was the first airline to actually use it in 1988. Now, let's find out how the system saves lives every day. All aircraft that have a maximum takeoff weight of over 5,700 kg or 12,600 pounds or that can carry more than 19 passengers have to equip with a TCAS ready transponder. This transponder is a device that can send and receive signals from other aircraft. As the aircraft flies, it interrogates the planes around it by sending out pulses on a certain frequency. The aircraft surrounding it will hear this interrogation and will in turn answer to it by broadcasting their altitude. Now, you would think that the interrogating aircraft not just knows the altitude of the answering aircraft, but there is more to it. By measuring the time that elapses between the interrogation and the response of other aircraft, it is possible for the interrogating aircraft to determine the distance and position of the other plane. For this purpose, a directional antenna is used. Now, the interrogating aircraft knows everything it needs to know. Altitude, position and distance between the two planes. This interrogation can be performed several times per second. From these repeated interrogations, the trajectory of the other aircraft can be determined and, if necessary, a warning to pilots can be issued if the trajectories of the own and the other aircraft cross. All this information is then displayed on the navigation displays of the pilot. Planes show up as little symbols with a number next to them. Depending on the proximity of the aircraft, the symbols change, which I will explain in a few moments. The little number is the vertical separation to the aircraft in hundreds of feet. For example, this aircraft right here has an altitude reading of minus 10, which means that it is 1000 feet below our current altitude. To determine if a threat to an aircraft exists, the TCAS system draws a sort of virtual personal space around the aircraft. Its size depends on the speed, which means that the space grows larger if the plane flies faster. It is divided into three zones. The first zone is called the intruder zone. In this zone, an aircraft is detected to be rather close, but not dangerously so. Its symbol changes from empty to solid white. If the intruder continues to encroach on our personal space, it will enter the TA zone, which stands for Traffic Advisory. As it does so, the TCA system will generate the following oral warning to get the attention of the pilots. Traffic! Traffic! 
Also, the symbol on the navigation display changes from white to orange. If an intruder comes this close to an aircraft, the pilots will ready themselves to intervene at a moment's notice. Let's say the other aircraft comes even closer and violates our innermost space, the so-called RA region. RA stands for Resolution Advisory. Now, the other aircraft's symbol turns red to signal that a danger of collision exists. Simultaneously, the transponders of the two conflicting aircraft will negotiate an avoidance maneuver and signal it to the pilots. They will hear a command issued to them by the system that sounds like this. Climb! Climb now! Additionally, their flight displays will show the required maneuver. Here, for example, the system commands the pilots to climb immediately at a specific rate of climb, highlighted here in green. All other rates of descent are prohibited, shaded in red. The other aircraft will therefore most probably descend or level off. Let's take a look at an example scenario in which TCAS will save the day. It's a beautiful day and we have leveled off our plane at 33,000 feet. The pilots of another plane have received the instruction to climb to 34,000 feet, which is the next available level just above us. But unfortunately, they misheard the instruction and climbed to only 33,000 feet on an opposing track to us. As they are closing in on us, the TCAS will first show them as a white filled symbol to show that there might be something amiss. Nobody notices their mistake and now they approach our TA zone and the caution message is generated. Both crews will start to look for the intruder visually but will not act on this information alone. Nevertheless, they will be ready if the situation escalates. Let's say it does and the intruder violates our RA zone. Now, a resolution advisory is generated and both crews will fly an evasive maneuver. The two transponders have negotiated that the other plane must climb and we must descend. As we do so, we inform air traffic control about the fact that we have to deviate from our cleared altitude. While the maneuver is ongoing, it has to be followed strictly and all commands by air traffic control have to be ignored. This is to avoid that one crew follows the resolution advisory and the other one follows air traffic control's command, which could lead to a dangerous situation. Once the situation is resolved, the system will announce the following advisory. Clear of conflict. Now, both crews will know that they were very lucky and that the system had worked perfectly. They can now return to their original clearance or clear up any uncertainties with air traffic control. You see, it's a pretty ingenious system that has saved countless lives since its inception. Safety studies estimate that the system improves safety in the airspace by a factor of between 3 and 5, a really significant margin. The system has not been without its flaws in the past though. For example, in 2002, two aircraft collided at the Swiss and German border after a TCAS procedure was not followed correctly by the crews. One crew followed the TCAS command while the other followed instructions given by air traffic control, leading to a situation in which both aircraft descended, bringing them back on a collision course. This accident once again highlighted that the system only works if commands are followed strictly. I have a video on this accident popping up on the top right corner right now if you are interested. Be warned though, it's one of my older videos. All in all, Tika still remains one of the most ingenious and important systems that improve safety in aviation. Its inception has probably saved hundreds, if not thousands of lives. According to studies, a TCAS resolution advisory is issued on average every 1000 flight hours on short-haul aircraft and every 3000 hours on long-haul aircraft. Considering the many thousand flights every day, chances are that TCAS saves lives every day somewhere around the globe. I hope you liked this week's video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you never miss another airspace video. Also, make sure to check out my Patreon. That said, thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next one.